Oh, there we go. So we're recording our class. So since I care about you guys so much, I put this material together for you to learn the software. So take a look at, over to the left, what some common, common applications are for the different processes, processes in CAM. Also, to the right, this is the common menu that pops up when we're working with our, at least our two, two and a half axis CAM software. Um, generally speaking, an easy solution to get your stuff working without putting any thought into it is just making sure you work your way through all of these little tabs. The tool geometry heights, passes, and linking tab. Uh, for the most part, the first four is all you really need to do anyways. Uh, the tool, we're going to go through this here shortly, but the tool is where you go and define what's going to be chopping your material away, or grinding it away maybe, whatever. Uh, the geometry is going to define the geometry that you're working on. So although we might be uploading a part that looks similar to something we've worked with before, like the rocker arm, we're not actually saying that we're machining from that part. We're going to be working off of a square or rectangular block of material and trying to create that shape from it. So you have to define your, ge uh, your geometry. Your heights control where the tool starts and finishes at. So not all of your operations necessarily have to go all the way through your block of material. Uh, and they don't necessarily have to start at the top of it as well. well. That seems kind of interesting. So you can define your heights. And then your passes, of course, to controls the passes through the material. So by a show of hands in the classroom, how many of you uh, CNC or machine apart regularly? Regularly meaning once a week. I'm, I'm just ra raising my hand as an example. Mine is once in the past 15 years. Uh, how many of you have machined anything in the past two months? In the past year? About the same group of people? Okay. Go for never. How about never? How many of you have never machined something? Okay. How about in the last decade? All right. I was waiting. That's, that's me. So I, I machined something in the past decade. Nah. But we'll go 12 or 13 years. Whenever my, my junior year of college was, that's when the last time I used one of these scary machines was. I've been too busy taking this CAD class. Yeah. <laughs> I've been too busy learning the silly CAD software. So no worries. All right. So we're going to jump into the software because it scares me a lot less. So let's go ahead and open up our Fusion software. And I'm not even going to explain how to because you're all experts at this by now. Before I continue on, let me check my questions. Well, there you go. Those are our answers to my questions I was asking. Thank you for the great participation, everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to my Meetup folder. And just as a gentle reminder, we're going to go in here. We're going to create another folder and call it Class 6. Six? Seven. Seven. Uh-oh, I wonder if I can edit that. No. Son of a bitch. <laughs> class seven. Fortunately, I didn't make a class six last time, so it looks like I didn't make a mistake. We're going to go in there, and we're going to choose Upload, Select Files, and we're going to browse to wherever you saved these files to. And I have so much confidence in you guys that uh, I'm not even showing you how to unzip a file this week. You've really made progress. I'm, I'm proud of you. I set the bar really low. And upload. So this should quickly upload. It's a pretty small file. So before we go on, do we have any other questions that you want to ask me before we start with Cam? I'm going to give you just a little spiel again after this. Well, there's a question from last week. I don't know if you want to cover it. Uh, Are you talking uh, about wood grain? But if you don't want to do it now. I don't want to talk about wood grain. But if you remind me at the end of class, did I show you Idea Station last week? I think I did. Yeah, you mentioned that. Okay. I have one difficulty with homework. One difficulty with the homework, okay? I was able to update my uh, part. Uh-huh. But I was unable to get the drawing file to go up. So you wanted to have a JPEG or a 
PNG file only. Oh, at, on the gallery? On the gallery. So the question was, I guess it was a question? We'll say yes. the question was that we had trouble uploading the drawing file to the gallery, the Fusion Gallery, for the few of you who did that. Um, I guess you would have had to upload a JPEG of it. Maybe I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> That's my only I answer to that. that. But still, uh, there were two separate file types, that you, two different like areas where you could upload a file type, and one seemed like it was for a model, and the other one seemed like it was for Images. Images. Right. right. Yes. So for the file, the file is typically a .f3d file that we're looking for, if I'm yeah. correct. So it's so not necessarily a DXF file. That was one of the things that I noticed that, uh, you know, which is why I'm kind of drawing is just like, hey, look, this is not a very good drawing. At least uh, your model by the way. It doesn't view um, STLs at all. So if you have a composite yeah. model, it's only like, there's one part of my model, and I can dimension that, and that's it. Yeah, STLs aren't really friendly with anything. Oh, They're hard to work with. I think for the drawings, it's more of like a either a native CAD or a traditional 3D CAD file, not necessarily STL, where we would be creating it, like printing or something like that. Yeah, it also right. just it would it just choked on any attempts to convert the STL. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine that would be the case. Uh, whatever is a BRB? What, what's the? Oh, the B rep. B rep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my uh, that was my submission. It was a mesh environment to where you could go in, fix mesh meshes, find if they're not manifold or not, and actually convert them. Not self-serving in the least, right there. That would be yeah. fabulous. That would be fabulous if we could all use Mesh Mixer or the MakerBot software in our software. I agree. So I'm very happy that the that an STP file format successfully can be uploaded. STPs can be. Thank goodness. I love neutral file formats. Yeah. Uh, oh, and one other thing I did want to bring up again before we start here. Sorry to keep dragging this out. I know you guys just want to dive in, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, I heard that a number of you were having trouble with the software crashing uh, during the experience. So when you would click on the Create 2D Drawing button, the software would exit unexpectedly. And I don't know why it was doing that. Uh, since we're here and I know that they have funny updating issues at TechShop, I'm going to blame it on TechShop and say it's because the software wasn't updating properly. That being said, some customers have made claims of increased instability after the latest uh, software improvements that we made. So maybe that had something to do with it too. So but that's with, yeah. That being said, I would not blame Fusion at all nice. on the record. So, I did, I, my experience was that it was, if I had, if I was logged into the gallery, mm -hmm. and then I went to Open Fusion 360 and worked up there, it crashed. Mm -hmm. But if I wasn't logged in, and it, it, probably coincidental. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> if my login ID couldn't, for example, if there was just one space, and right. it was and confused that, about who I was. There was a, there was right. a text genre weirdness that for some reason, the computers in the core, every single one, of, literally, I went to every single one was, was crashing on 2D drawings, and I went to the classroom, and it works. I, um, I'm going to say it had something to do with the updating, then, one way or the other. I know from my own yeah, personal looks experience, uh, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they vast internet security. Huh. Well, that makes sense. So lots of internet security causes problems for Fusion, and that, that makes good sense. Yeah, so like to put Fusion, it took me six weeks for the customer service to like actually kick right. Partially so on my fault. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> I finally was able to get a date, and we worked through, and he's like, oh, yeah, you have malware on your computer. I'm like, I shouldn't. I'm looking through my programs. I got rid of it fast, and I was able to download it. So, so malware causes problems, and I know where malware usually comes from, I'm just saying. So I'm going to go ahead and start by opening this file here. I'm going to right-click on it and choose Open. Can't use your work computer for that. Come on now. 
Yeah. Or, oh, I work with you. That's my hope. Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that That is. This is a part that nobody has ever seen before, I'm sure. Is it parameterized? That's a good question. It might be, but we're not going to explore that in this class. We're going to just look at CAM. So if everybody has this open, we're going to close the little data panel, and we're going to enter the CAM environment, a place we've never gone before. Are we all excited? I am. So if you just hover over this little panel over here to the left, down here you see CAM, which looks like a rectangle with a squiggly line around it. That's what CAMing is. And when you click it, you now enter the CAM environment. So unlike the blue uh, icons and the purple icons, we now have, I guess, these camming ones that look like squiggly lines everywhere. So 2D, 3D, drilling, actions, blah, 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 blah. So right now, Fusion 360 has both 2.5 and, and 3 axis cam abilities. In the future, I'll say the near future, what's up? Two and a half. Two and a half. So instead of two axis, where everything happens in the XY plane, there's still a depth involved with it. So you're going to be going up and down. 2.5 things, right. It's yeah, not curved surfaces, but more like steps. Right. Bosses, like Whereas the three can do your curved surfaces. Then, in X months, without looking at the product roadmap, I can't answer that for you, and I've been told that as I'm not a product manager, I'm not allowed to answer such questions. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at the map! Uh, we will be getting five axis cam added to the software as well. Um, I don't know how much use that is at Tech Shop, really. Um, right. So it'll be there, but you don't have to worry about learning it because you can't take advantage of it. Uh, I've also heard rumblings of lathe capabilities being added in and other stuff. Lathe would be nice. Go vote that up on the idea station if you're interested because I know it's there. Um, so that is that. I think for most people, I would dare say, well, nah, three axis is good enough for most people. Two and a half is usually good enough for a lot of parts that are machined. If you're Uncle Carl and you're working at Pier 9, we have some ridiculous 11 axis machine that just makes my head hurt and is very scary looking. Uh, and I think it, uh, in all reality, takes something like 100 hours of training before you're allowed to use it. So, yeah, that's kind of crazy. So anyways, let's go ahead and start using the software. Show of hands, who's excited? All right, let's not, let's not drag this out anymore then. So we're going to go ahead and get our model looking like... That. See it? Just like that. So that we can see these nice holes. Oh, man. These nice holes in the top of the model, that nice top surface, just kind of like that. You could use the view cube if you wanted. I don't think it could get you exactly what you want. Or you can just rotate the model around like I did, which I thought was the best way to go. And so with that, we're going to start. So before I continue, we're going to go through a number of different setups here. So we're going to go through a bunch of different processes, processes? where we uh, define our block of material, uh, put a surface finish on our part, cut material away, cut the holes in, and each time we're going to go through and select various tools to do the job and show you some of the different operations that the software does. So let's start by creating a new setup and defining our material. Well, not our material, but our block that we're going to be working on. So we're going to click on, under the setup, drop down, new setup. And for those of you who tried to do this ahead of time, I'm sorry for the very inconsistent instructions that were provided, but such is life. So setup is the first option, and the first option underneath that is new setup. At which point, this is what you see on your screen. 
And the first thing that we have to do is choose a stock point. So right now you see it selected right here. Boop, 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 boop. And you see that it's also added a little box around this. So this little box is our chunk of, let's say, aluminum that we're going to be milling away to create our sweet looking rocker. So I'm going to go up to this top corner and click. So you can see my starting point has now been moved up there. But I don't want my z-axis pointing down. I want it pointing up. So how do we switch that? Well, let's just hover over the arrowhead uh -oh, and click on it. Bloop. And when you do that, if you say bloop, it will actually switch it to the direction that you want it to be. No? No? How many of you do not have the arrow pointing the way you want it? Two, three. So let me show you again. If we, go, oh, if we go to new setup, so now from the rest of this time on, my setups are going to not match up with yours, but that's okay. Just follow along. We're going to click on this corner and then make sure to click the arrowhead and it will flip it up. If you just click on the body of the arrow, it won't work. You need to click the arrow head and pop it up. We'll be showing you later on what the body of the arrow does. I know, I'm keeping you in suspense, but that's okay. Oh, good? All right. You can't what? Well, I'm like, I don't have my three axes or isometric. Yours looks good. It's good enough. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is define our stock. If we click on the stock tab, <coughs> we can then define this. So instead of using a fixed box size, which is fixed relative to this part that we have made, we're going to choose our relative size box. And when we do that, we can type any sort of number in here that we want. And instead of using millimeters like some sort of fool, we're going to go ahead and use English inch. So we're going to, on the side stock, type in 0.15 inches. You can see it move over. The top, we're going to type in 0.5 inch. And you're going to see the box grow. And on the bottom, we're going to choose, again, 0.5 inch. And you can see the box expand again. So we're increasing the size of that box. What if you actually saw our chart? It's really allowing you to change your intercourse. Uh, you could, so if you what, if you clicked OK, you could right click on the setup and choose edit. So the question was, what if you accidentally pressed enter? You could right click on your setup and choose edit and then go over to your stock. Now you can see mine has changed to millimeters because that's my default unit system for CAM. Uh, if yours is inch, then you'll still be in inches. You can change that too by just going up the You can change that. By going where? By going to the units tab, it's right underneath the file name for the browser. If Drew would have shown up for class last week, he would have been able to say, in last week's class we reviewed this, but he was too rude to show up for class because he had to work. <laughs> See? So to change the units, you can either change it up here at the change active units or in your preferences, if you want to change it for all unit types, you can go to the uh, preferences right here and change it for everything, like your default units for CAM. Mine are going to remain in millimeters. So, in drawing? Yes. Uh, it will match whatever your default units are. Yeah, but there's no place to change that. Whoa. There is. Oh, well, you can change it up here for your model drawings, or if you type it in as inches, it'll do inches, I believe. I hit enter. All right, so if you edit the setup, you can change stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK to finish that first setup. And then we're going to flip through a number of pages to get to our next steps. So for those of you following along at home that have it or outside, page 16 is where we pick up at. 
And now we're going to first we're st going to start our first camming operation. And we're going to use 2D and we're going to choose face. So <coughs> under the drop down, you can see the third option is a face operation. And now we have just all sorts of great information in here. Fortunately for us, <coughs> We're going to pretty much ignore most of this information throughout today's class, so that's that's pretty good. Now, why am I going to ignore it? Well, because the program does a lot of this thinking for you, and if you're like me, you don't like to think, so it's good that it does it for you. So, we're going to go ahead and first define the tool that we're going to be using to do this operation. So, click where it says Select next to Tool, and you're going to see all sorts of libraries here to your left. Oh boy, yeah. So at this point in time, anybody that's using a Mac, you're going to probably have trouble. The Mac interface and the PC interface for this software is a little bit different. And by a little bit, I mean eh, probably more than a little bit. So just kind of listen to what I'm saying and follow along as best you can. And if you have any problems, we'll do our best to get you through it. But these, for some reason, these selection options are a little bit different. So do your best. You've been warned. Use boot camp. No, don't use boot camp. That's mean. Native on the Mac. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and find our tool. So if we scroll down, we're going to see that we have tutorial inch as one of our folders. Now also, for those of you who are using a Mac, if you happen to have the PDF open in front of you, you'll see that there is, you can see the differences on your screen or on your papers. So anyways, I'm going to click on the tutorial inch option and look at all of these great category options that we have for our tool. <coughs> So you see that we could search through these different libraries for these tools, or we could have them pre-selected for us in our tutorials category, which is pretty nice of somebody to do. So we're going to go ahead and search through all of these for a two-inch uh, face mill. Now, where could that possibly be? Look at that. It's right there at the, at the front. So that's pretty useful. So the very first one we're going to choose is the two inch face. Hooray. Does everybody see that one? It's the very first option. And then we're going to click OK according to the instructions, but realistically we click select. So we click select. And now you can see this is our tool that they've decided to plop on the screen for us. It's rather intimidating looking. That's OK. Well, probably not. But it was the first one right there that we're going to choose. Mine's on the opposite side of it. Well, that's okay. Well, sure. I'll let you do that. I don't mind. You're still going to get this done. I have faith in you. Okay. So next, what are we going to do? Well, I guess it's going to tell us to finish this operation. Well, okay, so we're going to go ahead and click the OK button. And now you can see it moved it around. And if I rotate my model around, it put this fancy squiggly line over top of my part, which is kind of cool, right? So what are we going to do now? Does everybody have this part showing with the fancy squiggly line on their screen? No, my tool looks different. Your tool looks different? I think you're still good to go, though. It's we'll blame that. The, uh, yeah, it's not showing that top much of the tool. The part. Right. Yeah. I think you're okay. So now let's let's see the best part about CAM. This is the part that I like the most, and that's the simulation part. So let's right click on where it says set up one or set up two, whichever one you happen to be on, and choose simulate. All right. Now, click the checkbox next to trans. Whoop, not that one. Simulating. Simulate. 
If you click the check, yeah, we're simulating. So, where so if we right click on setup two, we can or setup one, it might be in your case. You can choose simulate. Is anybody else afraid that one of those weights is going to come plowing through the floor? Yeah. No, we're good to go then. I feel like that's called fatigue. Eventually, it's going to fatigue us. And... So if it looks like this on your screen, click the checkbox next to stock, and your material that we're carving away is going to show up there. But we don't want it looking like that. We want to see our part in there. So we're going to click the checkbox next to transparent. And now we can see the hidden gem that is within our block of material. Wouldn't that be translucent? It is translucent. Oh no, it's transparent. But it is yeah. translucent. The stock is true. <sighs> Anyways, um, uh, yeah. <coughs> so we're going to go ahead and click this big play button, and we can watch the tool at work. Woo! Cool. Pretty cool, right? My tool shows transparent, not my stock. Well, you clicked the wrong button. <laughs> So if you click the checkbox next to stop, there you go. So now let's let's look at this one more time. If we click play, look at how the material's high, and we just cut it away, facing the material away, so that we work down to that that face of our part. Pretty awesome, right? Are we cutting away that half an inch that we added? I think it was a 0.15 inches at the top, but yes. Pretty great, right? Yes, James. Thank you. Thanks, that's better. So that's pretty awesome, but we're going to increase our capabilities from there. So before we go on to the next setup or the next uh, action, does anybody have any questions? Does that has is anybody stuck? I should ask. I'm not stuck, but my stock is not showing at all. Did you click the checkbox next to stock? Uh, Does a Mac like have one? Yeah. Oh, good. Awesome. And so then you'll have to click the transparent checkbox next to that in that option. All right. That is wonderful. Let me check for questions here before I move on. Is, it, is there a none there? One would have two tools in here. Two tools. I don't know why one would have two tools. I would think they probably were clicking buttons incorrectly. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I don't know why there are two tools there. But it'll speed it up. I mean, it'll take half the time to do your machining now. It's true. All right. So let's move on. And we're going to go to the adaptive clearing. It creates a roughing operation that uses more optimized toolpaths. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's all well and good. So to get there, you go ahead and you go to under the 2D dropdown, choose Adaptive Clearing, and we get this massive pop-up again, similar to what we did before. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to click the Select button again, because this time we don't want to use this massive tool that we picked before. We choose select, oh, and we're going to choose a flat end mill with a diameter equal to 0.5 inches. Now, wherever could that be found? I bet if we scroll down to the tutorial folder, we'll be able to find that. So, since it's a flat end mill, let's go ahead and look at ones that are called flat mill. Hey, we found them, and 0.5 inches. All right, that's wonderful. So for, before we move on, we're going to actually go ahead and define some additional parameters. So we're going to check the diameter, the flute length, the, all these different great things. But you say, James, it's not there. Well, that's because we've hidden it on you. So if you right click and choose edit, it brings us to yet an additional menu. Did everybody bring up the additional menu? Yep. Yeah. Also, I think the Mac people probably have this set up in a different fashion. Is it edit post-processor information? It is, maybe? I don't know what it is. Are you changing the overall length or the length? 
we're going to be changing the flute length. Well, we aren't actually going to be, but we're going to be going in and verifying that all this information is set. Did anybody get there on the Mac? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, a field for flute length. Oh, so on the Mac, you just have a field automatically set there for you. So it's a little bit nicer. Uh, we're going to put in a flute length of 2.5 inches, a diameter of 0.5 inches, <coughs> and on a PC, this is what it looks like. You should have two, but that's got three, I think. What has three? I think it has three. If yeah. you put them in in the wrong order, they get red on you. Yeah, if you put them in, that's a good point. If you put them in in, a, in the wrong order, it's going to get angry at you and show you red numbers or exclamation points because they can't realistically exist that way. But it will still keep the number so that you can adjust yeah, accordingly. Really? Just for the health. Fail to load health. I got that actually. Oh, I got that too. Don't worry about that. Uh, two flutes? I don't know why. On page general? Sure. Did you do that already? I did nothing. Well, mine has three, so we should lower it. Okay. So right. click OK. And click OK again, or select. Wait a minute. I don't know. This is just number. It doesn't say it's a flute. Yeah, number three. That's no, the third to, thing in the library. Oh, wait a minute. Go to, back to general. This should have been an inch. Oh. It was in inches, yes. What are you, what are you questioning? Under general. Go to general. General. Oh, number three. three Going three, 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 three. Yep. All right. So we were saying there was three flutes. All right. So we're clicking OK, and we're choosing select. Everybody good with their tool being selected? <coughs> and with that, you can see that these values have also changed based on what Fusion has decided is the right values for you to use. It's good that way. I think it's assuming an aluminum throughout uh, the process or something of that sort. I think we make one base assumption or, or assuming the steel that the default material is set to. So uh, if you go to the render environment, you know how, oh, sorry, the question was it doesn't know what material, so how does it know? So if we go to the render environment, it is set to a default material, and I believe that's what it bases its optimization, we'll call it, on. Yes, sir? My setup, two is what you, I don't have a tool like that. Mine is back to the one that looks like a dumbbell. So, that's a rendering problem. Yeah. Right. We'll look in a minute, but we're going to finish this off for everybody else first. Me. Different material. There you go. You have a dumb, dumbbell. I have a shake weight. All right. You have a shake weight. Do you? <laughs> Here's your taxi money. Have you seen South Park? Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, uh, choosing the geometry tab, we're moving forward. So we selected the tool that we're using. <laughs> click on <laughs> click on geometry and select the top outside edge. All right. So Click on that. Did everybody see that? That top outside edge. It highlights in red, and then you can select it. You can't? No. How did you, how did you just redo that? Rot row. Aw, so now I have to go back through. I'm going to do my adaptive crap. I'm going to select my tool. And then go down. Oh, is it there already? Yeah. Tool number three, select. And then you can choose that face. Okay. 
the well, face you want? Yeah, it's good enough. That's a good face to select. What I think they actually want you to select is this top, ugh, is this top edge, boop, right there. So if we unselect the pocket selection and hover over here and you see how it highlights in black, you can click on that. Followed by the heights. So our heights is telling us where do we want this to start and where do we want this to end. So right now it's kind of jacked up on us. We don't like the way it's set up. We want to change these values. Oh, so what we're really concerned about is machining away all of this material from the top to the bottom. So the bottom height, we're going to choose instead of selected contours, we're going to choose the model bottom. So if we look through here eventually, and each one of these things pops up the same thing that will tell you what each of these represents. But the model bottom represents the bottom of the model. So that's pretty, pretty logical. You can also choose an offset to this. Oh, it's getting down. But you're going to choose minus 0 0.05 inches. And when we do that, you can see that blue plane drop down a little bit. So we're giving this a little bit of clearance to machine a little bit past where the material is represented. So instead of assuming that we're perfect, which, I mean, it's a pretty safe assumption, we're going to give us ourselves a little leeway there. Does everybody have all of those beautiful planes on their screen? Yeah, but I can't enter anything to the offset. Well, I'm not going to do that. It won't let you enter anything on the yeah, offset. I have that, but uh, I don't know that. Did you change your from to model bottom? What is that? Uh, at bottom uh, heights, choose model bottom. I, I can't select that. Oh, you can't select that either? Hmm. Hmm. Can you see it by chance? Yeah. Let's see if everybody else out in the outside world has this. I followed the three repetitions rule, Dan. I followed it, I think. It might have been a, a slow three repetitions. Okay, and now I'm going to click OK. I clicked OK. It's too late. So for setup two, I'm going to again right-click and choose simulate. And now look at all those great squiggly lines we have. So if I click the play button yet again, it wears my material away. And then it changes the tool and cuts some more of that material away. Pretty awesome, right? And look at it. Look at it roughing it away. Um, what were your offsets for uh, yes, the top height and the bottom? Did you put for the bottom, I just used an offset of 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 inches. No, we have not done any of the whole stuff yet. I have one setup right now. What did you do for the top? What's that? Did you do the top also? No, the top it just left alone. So again, if we click the play button, you can watch your material get chopped away. Chop, 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 following those paths around. So you can see the little squiggles and the straight lines that it follows. Is there somewhere where it's recording and tell you how much time it's being spent on the machine? The question is, is there somewhere recording how long it's going to take in the real world? Yes, when we output stuff later on, we should be able to take a look at that. Okay, thank you. If you don't have the play button... Also, if you click on the statistics time, it tells you the machining time, the distance, the operations, and the tool change. Under statistics. Yeah, but you'll also have an output report later on in this process. <laughs> 31 hours is probably incorrect. I would have to say you may have selected something incorrectly. 
I'm getting a little impact. But the tool folder with the object. Impact is also not good. But I know you've already run a successful CAM operation. Not on this, right. All right. So it, we're going to be moving on here. Moving on. How many of you did this exercise before class? Nobody in the classroom did. James, why did you post this stuff before class? <laughs> Nobody could upload it. That's the reason it didn't happen. Okay. That's what we'll go with. We tried. All right. We tried. We were going to run this. So we're going to start by doing another 2D contour. So under the 2D, let's go to 2D contour. And when we select that, we're going to choose the half inch flat end mill or it remembers that we selected it, which is nice. So we're going to keep using that and we're going to choose geometry and we're going to select that same fancy edge. I guess this time I'm going to click the lower one because I was supposed to click it before, but that's okay. Nobody really cares. What, why is it showing material cut away that isn't cut away? <clears throat> What, this, I just don't have my stock shown okay, at the I'm moment. Sorry. Yep, so if you click away from the model, it will hide your stock, which is what I did. And now I'm going to change my height. What's, wait, what did you change in geometry? Hold on, the question is, what did I, I didn't change anything in geometry. You have nothing as your blue box, and I, you, I have nothing and you have changed. Why is that? I, I don't know what this? Yeah. Because I selected this line. Did you select this edge? Okay. There you go. Is that right here? I think that's the direction of the tool that it's going to be moving. So instead of moving this way, it's moving that way. If you click on the arrow, it changes. Thank uh, you. Well, if we hold off like 10 more steps, we'll see another option for that as well. So I'm going back to the heights, and this time I'm going to change oh the top height from the top height stop top to from uh, oh to the model top. I'm sorry. Oh, heights is here. They're scary with those weights. And on the bottom, we're going to choose the model bottom. So you can see if I scroll out, the model bottom is now listed down here. And I'm going to give it an offset of minus point minus point zero two five inches. And it drops it down a little bit lower. Uh, no offsets for the for the top, no, no offsets. And now you can click OK. Oh my God. So now we're going to try and manufacture, mill this little chamfer in there. So we're going to go to 2D and choose 2D contour. And we're going to select a new tool. That flat tool just isn't doing the trick for us. So if you click the select button and then scroll back down to the tutorial inch library, we're going to choose our chamfer mill. That's like, I think, a half inch and 45 degrees. So the only chamfer mill that we have available to us, fortunately, for this setup. So we can select that. And again, if you're on the Mac, this is a little bit different. You can go ahead and fiddle with your numbers. If we right click and edit on the PC, here are our values. Oh. So Mac users, is this significantly different for you? It's different, but it's not hard to do. Okay. The flute length and the yeah, so the flute length, 
is a quarter inch, I believe. And the shoulder's 0.5, the diameter's 0.5. Is there anything else that, that's needed to type into there? Like the overall, I think, is, you know, is two. That's good that it, it's, I know it's different. I know that people have emailed me being angry about that as well. Wait, but, those are just the two variables, right? Diameter and flute length? Yep, type those in, so flute 0.25. Okay. So I'll click OK myself and choose select blah 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 okay I always show that message just so I'm reminded that I've changed something in my library you like the Mac version better it's easier I think it's like more upfront about what's happening and makes sense to me but it's kind of hidden on ours so now let's click the geometry tab and we're used to selecting this edge, which is the one we're going to be uh, making our chamfer on. And this time, don't right click, just click on the Passes menu. I'm going to actually click on Passes this time. And this is a little bit tricky. So right now, we're going to try and work on our chamfer but this thing's not big enough. Our box isn't big enough. But if you click on this little scroll thing, you can scroll down and see that chamfer is already checked for us. And that we can then change our chamfer width and our chamfer tip offset. So for our offset, we're going to go ahead and type in a 0 0.05 inches and be happy with that. And then you would just press OK. Did you scroll down in the box? The question was, why did I not get the chamfer menu? I probably didn't save. So while we're looking for the chamfer menu, let me right click on the setup and choose simulate. And click the play button, and it will play us through all of our nice chopping away of material that we're doing. Simulate it? It's done. All right. Was that pretty fancy looking? If we go in here, you see the purple is showing the chamfer. So these things have various colors for what they're doing. Uh, something else I did want to show is when we click play, you can change how fast or slow it's going and what direction it's going with our little speed bar down there. So after we're sick of watching this animation over and over again, we can just speed our way through it. Don't talk back. <laughs> it would be fun. We've talked about that with other programs, actually, where you could actually change the sounds that go with it. Like an inventor, when you connect two parts together in an assembly, it's like, click, click. We'd like to make it so that you could like put your own sound bites in there, like go or something, whenever you like wow. smack parts. Yeah. It could work for boys. Uh, the guys, the random person whose name is David, and uh, we put on his Mac the sound for the um, emptying the garbage, the voice from Hal. I don't think that's a good idea. See that? See, perfect. <laughs> he says that so, that is to be the tool to collect, but I think. It only shows cutting it all at once, but it, I think it cuts it in layers. There you go. It will cut it in layers, is what he's t saying. When I simulate, it doesn't seem to remember what I have machined prior to that. Yes. I mean, it, yeah, me too. If I simulate the uh, the fly cutter to, to remove material from the mm -hmm. base, and then I want to do the uh, end mill, when I simulate the end mill, the fly cutter material is back. Do you have it all under the same setup? Yeah. Cam is backwards on my Mac. I'm wondering. I'm not sure. So I'm just trying to watch to see if it does the same. Oh, simulate everything. Simulate everything. Oh. 
Is that different on the Mac yeah. as well? Yeah. Okay, so it is different. We have to simulate from the setup from the individual. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. You definitely have to simulate from the setup. So every time to see all of the operations, right click on the setup to do the simulation. So one more time for the simulation, and then we move on. If we click simulate, click the play button. It's just fun to watch, isn't it? We want to sell the scrap. So that's fair. Well, oh, that's true too. <laughs> I have a different set of things. Cam porn, they call it. That's a, at least that's what Uncle Carl calls it. Not that he's allowed to say those sorts of things. All right, so now we're going to move on to really exciting things like getting those holes in our part because that's what we all want to do. Who doesn't want to do that? Everybody wants no. to. You don't? I'm not, not opposed to it. Though. Okay, thank you. That's pretty cool. You see the little tool with the 45? It helps if you make the noises while you're going through the animation. It will make it faster. That tool, I didn't get that loaded properly, but I have a different set of sub-menus on the left, so that's mistakes. Probably. All right, so we're going to move on to boring operations. Not boring, boring. Ah. Uh, So oh. under under the 2D option, we're going to choose bore. James is a bore. That's not nice. You're supposed to defend me with my self-deprecating humor. We choose bore, and now we're and with golf shoes. It's and with <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, so we're going to change our tool here. So let's go ahead and click the select button. And we're going to choose the same half inch end mill used in the 2D adaptive operation. So we could either choose over here if we have it selected, <coughs> or we could go down here and choose the half inch end mill operation. So you could scroll through and look for it, and I think it's what? This guy? Or if you didn't want to, you could have just selected it from, <coughs> I think, the second or third operations that we did in the previous. Uh, selections. But I went to the tool library just to investigate all of our different options, selected it, and I believe we can just click select on this one, but let me verify. We can. Good. So let's choose select, and we have our tool change. So it changed from that uh, chamfer tool that we were using to just this one that we previously selected. So we should be able to set up two new operations. Drilling? Or how did you, where, how did you put it? Bore. So to do that, it's under 2D, and you choose bore. Okay, starting from setup 2D. All right. I guess we could have done a new setup. Maybe we were supposed to even, but I don't really mind. I bet you don't unless you unclamp. Or right, you would have. Right. I think for this it would make sense to keep it all in the one setup. All right, so next... So let me step back here. Would it make sense to have done this before doing the chamfer tool then? Or does it not matter? You would, because of changing the tool, wouldn't it yes. save you more time to do this first? It depends on whether your milling machine has an automatic tool chamfer. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Okay. So moving on, let's go ahead. Probably, yeah. Yeah, that's what I would think so. Let's click on the geometry tool. And this time we're going to choose the inside of the circular face right here. So the big circle, that's the noise that boring makes. Is got it? And now we click OK. So that was pretty easy. Is this smart enough to tell you that if you're if the design hole is smaller than your tool. Yeah, it yells at you for your yeah. tool size for sure. I think the blue is the center path of the tool itself. Mm -hmm. so yeah. The question so is, is it smart fun. enough to yell at you if your tool's too big for the hole that you're making? And the answer I say is yes, it yells at you and you make a you choose a giant tool for something yeah, that's you small. Do front, you could do it the other one now. Question? No, I'm good. I, okay. I see your, your 
boring out the larger higher level pockets. So Correct. Okay. Yep. All right, so now we're going to get fancy and we're going to right click and choose repeat bore because that saves us all sorts of time instead of doing two clicks. We did one or something. So right click on this empty screen somewhere on the display screen and just choose repeat bore. Got it? And now we're going to oh, click on our tool. So we're changing the size of the tool that we have. And we're going to go down and choose tool inch. And this time we're going to choose the quarter inch right underneath the one that we had before. And I'm going to right click and choose edit to show all of these lovely values. And it says have a diameter equal to 0.25 and a flute length greater than 1.25 inches. So 1.75 looks greater than 1.25, so I'm happy with that. So for you Mac users, just type in those numbers. 0.25 diameter, 1.75 should be good for your flute length. And then click OK. Oh yeah, so in general, click OK. You have a shoulder length, 1.75. I'm going to click select again, say OK to my message that always pops up. And this time I'm going to have to rotate my model just a little bit so I can see these holes that we're working on. Or I can click on all three of them, one, two, three, for my... Are you in geometry Yes, in the geometry tab, sorry. So on, in the geometry tab, you're going to choose which faces you're going to be working on, or which holes, I guess it's which faces. Is it all the way through? Or? There should only be two of them because you've changed tools. There should only be two what? No, the third, the third one. Yeah, so the one hole oh. is going within the big yeah. circle that we uh, milled out before. Why? That was part because, of 4817. Okay. So the other one we had the half inch tool, which would have been too big for this, this hole, I think, okay. to nicely make it. You've selected those two. So now since we're using the quarter inch tool, it can actually drill it out properly, bore it out. Do we need to also, I guess you're... What's that? Oh, the bottom of the rockers, the bottom rocker arm, is it going to go all the way? It is not. We are going to continue on with different operations to get to that. So the question I think was, are we going to go through all the way to the bottom ones? But if you think about it, Right now, in our setup, there's still material through all of this. <coughs> so we're going to first get, I believe we're going to first get rid of that material and then do the other holes. Or potentially we'll do the other holes and then get rid of that material. I don't remember. We'll have to look and find out. So let's go ahead, right click on setup one or two, whichever one it is for you, and choose simulate. And now you can see we have these fancy holes. And click the play button. And watch it cut away all of our material. Oh, does everybody like this as much as I do? Watching this thing over and over. You do good. I, it gives me a great feeling of satisfaction. I think. I think that's why it is. It's like I'm doing something right. It's almost like this is a support group. It's yeah. like this is a support group, right? And again, if you wanted this to speed up, you could go and move that little little thing and. Is there a question, comment, yeah, concern? Sure He's like, chamfering the bottom rocker arm instead of the top one. Yeah, it just does that. It turns right and does its bottom. Huh. Is it the that that's really, well, I mean, I'm betting that the red is a complaint. I'm guessing the red's a complaint. Yeah, we're getting to the holes. This is the oh, good man. part. That's pretty awesome. Blender. That's a smoothie here. It's a lot like one, yes. And then go all the way through, so it's going to do from the other side. How do you like that? All right. So that is that. And we're moving on. Question? Yeah. My second door, 
has an exclamation point. And I tried to change the tool size to quarter inch. And it still gives you a heads up because I want to select a new tool. And I, I, I could have. If you scroll way down to the end, it's the one that's the model on top of it. All right, let me check my questions here to see if I have any. Can you control the cool and streams on off? Yes. Hey, Yuri, you're watching. That's good. How was your other training? I hope it was good. And why are you signed in with your name? Uh, if you use a quarter inch tool, proper size, never mind, you saw, feeds and speeds. Okay, I think we're good on the questions in here. I think. Okay. So moving on, if we have no other questions in here for the time being, we're going to get on to more outstanding stuff. And by more outstanding stuff, I mean closing the simulation and rotating this thing around so that we're looking at it, uh, I don't know, I guess from the other side. What was that? You got rid of your tool. Uh-oh, what did I do? Got rid of what tool? I still have my tool. The question is, how, I don't know, click escape or click away from the screen maybe? So now I'm going to look at mine like so. So on the opposite face. So if I go to my setup, you don't have to go to your setup. I'm just showing you what, it looks opposite of what we used to have. So are you upset because, oh, you have that tool. I wouldn't worry about it. I would just leave your tool there. You sure. had two of them before. Yeah, you no, had two. You now you're down to one. The great one you got is fair. <laughs> it's only an electron space. All right. So we're going to create a new setup here. So we just, I guess, took our part off the machine, twisted it around, slapped it back on. Does that sound about right? Not really. Because no? If, if in the real world, wouldn't, this wouldn't work. So that rectangular block at the bottom of your stock, it has to know where you it have to find a way to grab a box. Well, Why would you not? The PDF has a discussion on the soft and the, the soft, hard Yeah, the hot, soft okay. and the hard so clamping. Yeah. Mo yeah, like modeling the clamps to your part or something of that yeah, sort. The clamp will fit exactly right. right. Yeah. So in that perfect world that of, that okay, work. that's good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and choose setup, new setup. So under the setup option, choose new setup. And again, we're going to choose our box in the top corner here. And we're going to flip it like so. So if you click on the red arrowhead, initially it probably looks like that. Click on the red arrowhead for your X, and it flips it like so. So your Z is still up. <coughs> what if you want it? Look at your coordinate to where your Z, Y, X, zero is starting. What do you mean? You want to see where that coordinate is after you flip it. I'm not sure what you mean. On, the, on your grid. You're not even on the grid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I see. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so back to the stock tab. We're going to go ahead and again change our options here. So instead of using a fixed size box, we're going to use a relative size box. And we're going to use 0.15 inch, 0.5 inch, and the bottom we're going to use minus 1.5 inch. Wow, look at that. So why is it that we're only using it with this size? Because it's already cut to, down to that level from above. That was good. See, and you say you're slow. Boy, I'm impressed. Kidneys. Kidneys, that's right. Well done. So we have our shape defined, and we can then click OK. Does everybody have their stock defined to this size first? No. My, I still have to 
Did you use minus 1.5 inch in the bottom offset? That should bring it from the bottom up. Okay, perfect. And we click OK. All right. Let's check these questions here. No. How do you hold it? The oh, so so when you look at the PowerPoint or not the PowerPoint, I'm sorry, the PDF, Dan, there's a write-up about uh, the clamping options and hard versus soft and the soft that can be uh, milled or machined, I guess, perfectly to match your part. So that's what we were just talking about in here a little bit ago. Uh, yeah, so like a mold for your part. So since we have endless amounts of money to throw away on this stuff, we can just machine these things perfectly. Uh, so read through that in the PDF and you'll understand. And who machines that? You do. Why would you not machine that? You're made of time and money. Come on. You can ask Carl to mold that or to machine that for you. He's got a lot of time and money. Memory foam? Like the thermo... <laughs> okay, I'm going to invent this. Once I learn and once I'm allowed to use this machine at the tech shop, I'll, I'll invent that. The memory clamp. The memory clamp. I go. like the name. That's good. That's half the problem is marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the patent and we're okay with that. If you drill a hole in the right order, you can use the hole to drill as actual hole. Yeah, but no, because of tolerances, you can't. Let's see. If you have it loose enough that you can actually get a bolt through there, you've got a slot. So yeah. the soft jaws thing is a bit. I hate to ask a question. Though. Sure. Did we actually countersink that other side? No. Did we countersink it? We what do, do you mean? Did we do the counterbore? The, the big. It wasn't counterbore yeah. yet. Counterbore. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing. So we flipped it before doing the the. We did not clip it. The only know. thing on the opposite face is the through hole. The through hole. Okay, no, so, it, the, so the counter door hasn't been done. No, yeah, okay. we counter. We did the we did the big it's hole the and the little hole through it. No, but it didn't go all the way. But through. no, oh no, but it didn't go all the way through the stock. Right. But my question, I did miss the fact that we did the. We did the so right. So the question was, did we do the counter counter bore? And that was bore one, where we just did with the half inch diameter, <coughs> then we switch tools to the quarter. That's why I was confused before with the size of the okay. tool. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So now we're going to finish this stuff up. So we're going to kind of repeat what we did before. So we should all be experts at this. Well, well we... So anyways, 2D, we're going to choose face. So we're going to do to this side what we previously did to the other side. Got it? We are going to choose the other tool, that is correct. So under, or next to tool, I guess it's not under, let's click the select button. And again, you could select from here, or you could <coughs> scroll through these different options and say, well, maybe there's a better option. Well, if there was a better option, I would have picked it to begin with. So I'm going to select that. There's already the list of tools you've already used. Right? I know. I'm just saying those are your two options for you to use. For those of us who like options. And now we're going to click select. Mm. Everybody have their tool selected? And we can click OK. And now we can see those squiggly lines show up again on this face. Wait, did you, you selected the face though? No, just click OK. What? It's really smart. It knows to get, it's doing a facing operation, so it knows to get down to that face is what I take it as. Any arguments on that? All right. That should have worked on the other side then. It did. Well. It did. But we selected the now. I don't think so. On the first one? No. I didn't think so. I think the first time through we only, we just said face, and then on the next operations, when we were cutting the material away, a ways. <laughs> Cutting the material away, we selected the edges, which is what we're going to do now. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're not going to do that now. We're going to do the boring operation. Boring. 
So under 2D, let's choose bore. We're going to select our tool. And you could again either select it from here or search through your library. So I'm going to select it from here and click select. Ouch. Does everybody have their tool selected? Yes. We're going to now choose the geometry tab. I'm going to choose this guy. And we're going to choose this guy. And click OK. So now if I would right click and simulate just this setup and choose play, we're going to see it do the facing operation. And then whack a hole in these things. So just like the last time, we used the bigger one. And then we would. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm upset about that. Maybe. I did not. Let's watch it one more time. Let's see what it did at the end. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little jiggle. All right. And so now we're going to close the simulation. I'm doing the other face, and there is no counter. Right. On the other face, there's only the one hole that has the counter. That makes sense. Okay. We're going to use the bore operation again. So under 2D, choose bore. Yep. Oh, yeah. Could have done the right-click repeat bore again. Yep. Select. And we're going to choose the quarter inch again. So either from here or in the tutorials, I'm going to choose the quarter inch there and select. I'm going to select these two holes for us to do. And click OK. <clears throat> Are we all happy with contouring our holes there? Contouring? All right. So let's go ahead. And if I click away, all my stuff disappears. That's fine. You can click under 2D again, and we're going to choose 2D contour. And again, we're going to be trying to apply a chamfer to the edge of this part, just like we did the previous time. So we're going to click the select option next to tool. And let's go ahead and find what we were using before. The only one that says chamfer. The only one that says chamfer. <laughs> Choose select. Oh. And now let's zoom in and select this edge. So choose this bottom of those two chamfer edges. And remember, for this one, we were defining our passes. And if we zoom down, we see chamfer. What does the tip offset do? It's a heck of a question. I think it moves it so that the tip of the part is moved away, so I think the angle is probably a little bit different. I'm not sure, though. Or not different, but it's moving away from the center point, so maybe it would remove less material. Or are you using towards the point of the bit rather than towards the right. edge, maybe? Which, which, which is your menu? Your geometry? So the question is, what's my menu? Uh, the geometry was used to select this edge for the chamfer, and then passes was used 
to select, uh, if you scroll down, to choose chamfer and add the offset in. Was it 0.5 or 0.05? 0.05. And at which point we could then right click and choose to simulate this again. If we press Jeepers. If we press play, it will work us through all of our good stuff that we've been doing. Yeah, that's interesting. So we're not really setting our heights on this? No, we're not really setting our heights on this. Because you're using that diagonal edge of the fit, uh, if, if you set the height, it's irrelevant. Uh -huh. So it, it knows. All right. But well, we're not answering the question from top of the model or from bottom of the model anymore. From what? Top of the model or the bottom? Well, that was that was when we were cutting through and roughing out our shape. Yeah. It was we were defining how far we wanted it to cut through. So from the top of the model, we wanted it to go all the way down to the bottom of the model. Then when we flipped it over, we have this excess material to face off okay. and like uh, add the chamfers around then in the holes. That's why we didn't have to do that again. That material was already gone for us. Close this guy. And well, almost done. No, so, like, right. So again, if we have to, we have to rotate our model around a little bit. Well, we don't really have to, but I'm going to. I'm going to put mine. I don't know, so that I can see it sort of like, uh, sort of like this. All right. So, so far we have the shape cut out, but all of this big middle section is still left there for us to remove. Because we don't want that in there. Yeah. Who wants that in there? Stinking. Stinking. Yeah, I'm good for nothing. All right. So we're going to choose under 2D. Shouldn't this be a new setup? I think I skipped that step. Yes. Yeah. I think so too. It better be. So we're going to go under setup, new setup. Oh, I did skip that step. And this one's a little bit hokey. So let's go ahead and select 2D, bore, blah, 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 geometry holes. Blah, blah, blah. I did the chamfered edge. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I was just looking at the wrong page. So that makes sense. Set up and the stock point. So the stock point for this one, we're going to try and make, um, oh, if I rotate it around so we can actually try and see, we're going to try and make it this center point. Bloop. So we click on that center point and we need Z to be pointing up, right? So we're this time, Instead of clicking on the arrowhead, when you see I click the arrowhead, it just flips it over back and forth. We're going to click on this body of uh, the arrow, and we're going to have to choose the vertical line like so to make it pop up. Yeah, this is a little bit bizarre. New setup, yeah, so I chose the center stock point. Is that shit? It's hard to tell which center that is. Is that, is that center from the very top? Uh, this is my center at the very top. This is my center at the midpoint. So which one are we picking? Uh, I believe we're picking the one from the very top. And then what are we clicking? We click here. Oh my goodness. How do we get that? Let's click. So how do you get the Z and Y to change? How do you get all those dots? Okay, so one more time. If we click on setup and new setup, you can just click on the body of the blue arrow and click on one of these vertical lines like this and it flips it up there. Not so much. <coughs> It does. <laughs> is, that, is that where you want it? Yep. Or you click on the body of the blue arrow. And then you have to define what 
uh, a, what line you want it to follow. So this vertical line. What if it's an airplane structural window? I don't you wouldn't have a straight line in it. And then that I don't know. Okay. You could probably use one of these lines somewhere. You have to be right on the line. Yeah, you have to be right on the line. So one last time. Can you set up? Let me try. So we always orient to No, you can't. We because did, you're, because of your line. Yeah, we did this on all the other steps, right? That just this is the test that we see. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh, was kind of like so. And click OK. So that was the three times. Everybody have it? It's Z Z top. That is correct. Z Z. We're not in Canada. What's that? Anybody else worried about getting it in the vice correct on this one? Uh no, I'm not. I mean, because well, there's, there's not a flat bottom. There's another case where you would have it. Right, you'd have, have to have the soft the jaws. Yeah, no. the same thing. Well, soft jaw, I mean, this actually has, you could use hard jaws because there's two flat surfaces on the side. Yeah, but, but then so long as you had it perfectly right. level. So if you were making a bunch of these, you would, you would make some soft jaw, uh, soft jaws with that bottom edge of the rocker. Who machines and like that? Hey, enough right from the out. peanut gallery out there. there. You, I'm glad someone liked your homework, though. Strategy, would it be better to actually do this first? Before cutting away Before that? Cutting away. I'm not an expert. I might think so, too. Well, you don't think yeah. so? 14 years ago, I still wouldn't have known. So I don't know. All right. All right. Let's let's keep moving. We will have so much time for these questions at the end, I swear. So remember, we still have to define our stock. So for those of us who clicked OK already, we can right click on our setup and choose Edit and click on the Stock tab. And again, instead of choosing Fixed, let's choose Relative. And we're just going to drop a bunch of zeros in here. And click OK. Okay. And now 2D, we're going to now choose the 2D pocket operation. If we went back to our handy dandy PowerPoint slide that we were looking at earlier, whatever's written here is pretty much what it was telling us earlier. I just lost my little Z up. Whatever, you just, whatever I just did. With this selected, we're going to change our tool. So click Select on Tool, and we're going to again choose the quarter-inch flat mill, which we've used multiple times. So I'm just going to select it right here and choose Select. And you can see our tool change. And now we're going to have to define what are we chopping out away. What about your length? I don't, I don't see how the length changed. The length of what? That uh, quarter-inch tool. I don't know. Maybe it didn't. Okay. okay. The length of the tool. Yeah, the, the length. length of the, the length. Well, the depth of the cut is going to change. Yeah, the depth of the cut will change. So next, we're going to have to choose our geometry tab. So we're going to select what we're going to be working with, or what we're going to be cutting. And if I hover over this little line, it selects an all blue to show what we're going to be working with, and it projects this little cut down here. Oh my goodness. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So now if we click on that little blue line that just showed up, we get this mini toolbar. So before we were using a closed contour, we want to be using open contour. So if we select open contour over here to the right, we can then go through and select all of these edges just by clicking on them that we're interested in working with right now. So I'll go back through and do that again because I'm sure that was not easy to follow along with. Your tool is the chamfer tool. Right? No. No, my tool is the quarter oh, inch. It's not, it's chamfer. See? He's, or this I is don't. geometry? This yeah. is geometry. So let me cancel out of this and go back again. 
So under 2D, we're going to choose the 2D pocket option. We're going to select our tool and change it to the quarter inch flat and click select. And now in geometry, in the geometry tab, you can hover over this where we're going to be machining out our little pocket here. And you see everything highlights, but when I click, it gives me this blue path. If I click on that, I'm then able to choose my open contour option and choose which of these lines it's going to be following to do my machining. You know, so nope, you don't need to shift at all. You can just keep clicking. You don't also need to select the, the end of it? The end of it being what? Oh, okay. So you, you've selected the inside of the pocket, but ending at the... Uh, it's going to make it open. I think we're actually... So are we supposed to select the bottom? I think that makes more sense. In my case, the tool is right. 2D to the pocket. Oh. Select tool. Last time. Flat. Quarter inch. Select. Geometry. Select this guy. Click on you. Open contour. Oh boy. So if we, we agree it's the bottom. Mm-hmm. I if think. You select the line you don't want. Can I, you I agree. It? You yep, you just click it again. If you select a line that you don't want selected, all you have to do is click it again and it will go away. So all of your lines will be selected or highlighted highlight in blue, like so on the bottom. Don't do the rounded surface. Do to there. Before you do anything, you can't click, uh, click the green plus arrow and choose accept current contour. At which time you see that thing. That was, um, repeat that? Was you click the green contour, accept current contour box. Some of you might see this. If you do, you have to click the red arrow. Like this is showing what we're doing machining. You don't want that. We're chopping that away. How many of you did not do that? An expensive <laughs> error is correct. Oh my goodness. Okay, we should click what now? I have the red arrow with that path. Well, then you're good to go. With this, but it doesn't have the the. We're almost done. We'll come back to that. Yeah, it did work. We'll come back to it, I swear. And you click the little green plus mark that says accept selected contour. This is what we've been waiting for. And then you make sure that it looks like so. Not like this. Make it look like that. Okay, we're going to go back. Dan, we're going to go back and do this one more time. So 2D, pocket. Select your tool. I think we all have that part done. 2D, pocket. Select the tool. Good. Choose the geometry where we select this highlighted jobby and click on it. And we choose, instead of closed contour, that whole loop, we choose open contour, which is this opened contour. And when we do that, we then click through these lines on the bottom of our part. Like so. Mm 
So that they're highlighted in blue. And before you do anything else, you click the little green plus sign after they're done being selected and choose Accept Current Contour, at which time you'll get this highlighted patch. If your patch looks like so, you're intercoursed. You'll want to click the red arrow and flip where material is being removed. So is that what I didn't do? I should just click that? Click the red arrow. Click the red arrow again. There, I think maybe you got it. I don't know. I don't know what you did. Maybe after your 14 tools get done tooling it. <laughs> so to move on, you then click on the Passes tab. And we're going to uncheck the stock to leave. So we're saying we don't want any crap left in there. Uncheck that box and click OK. And at this point when I was practicing yesterday, I got bothered by somebody. So Joe, I have lots of information that I have to talk to you about. That's my note. <laughs> Um, all right, so with that set up, we could right click and simulate it, yeah. click play, and watch it chop all of our material away. Okay, so was that um, a choice that we made to basically turn everything on the inside to sawdust rather than ending up with a chunk? Right, because you don't want a big chunk coming out into a cutter and smacking okay. and flinging into you? Yeah, you want to turn off that would be dangerous. It would be it would be bad. Okay. But it actually looked like it did the Can you simulate again? I will simulate again. Can you change the simulate so we can see the blade? Yeah, take a better somewhere what? there Yeah. Okay. So is the it's going from the in, it's the inside most path to the outside. Okay. Why is it red? I think I clicked on it or something. It, it left scrap. It, I think. No, I guess it didn't. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys. For that. My tool float might not yeah, be big yeah, enough. Yeah, the actual. You don't want to leave a, a big slide in the center because it'll bounce around madly and ruin your part. How do you make it so it's a gradual uh, tool path down instead of just going right down to the bottom and doing it? How do you make it so it's stacked? Here's the That's the passes thing. Yeah, back into the passes. I think there's some sort of multiple, multiple depths right option, yeah. and then you can change all of these options as to how it goes down into there. Okay. <laughs> so, just a few more things to show, like uh, your setup sheet and your G code. Oh my goodness. I know, I'm excited too. So I'm going to minimize these little options here so that all of my setups are now collapsed. Setup 2, 3, and 8 on my screen. <coughs> I'm going to click on this one, hold down shift, and click on the next one. Right click and choose setup sheet. And you have to choose some place to save this to. New folder, sheet and select that folder <coughs> and we'll click OK to that message and blammo there's my setup sheet. Who uses setup sheets? Anybody? No? Okay. Well, I guess we don't really care. Somebody out there does. And it's a all of, our, well, all of our units, like our unit system, is set to millimeters. We just type them all in in inches. What did you type to bring this up? Setup sheet is not right what I get. I get. So let me show you again. If you select all of these, right click and choose setup sheet. Yeah, that's what I did. 
Okay. I'll save it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let me see if there's any questions before we get into our last section. Nope. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. <laughs> yeah, right, so. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, with these three selected, right click and choose post process. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Fusion. Click OK. And now I suppose this is relatively important to all of you. Uh, you choose whatever the heck it is that you're working on. What kind of machine do we have here? Terma. Oh, and there's a problem with that. Somebody was saying that. Gabe was saying that thing don't work. So he'll be able to, was it? Tormach. So go see Gabe for all things that are problems with the, the G code. Can you pass this down, please? Why not? So this is, in theory, how you do it. You select what you're working with. So we're going with this. And then you need some program name or number. So we have a little write-up here. Many machines, like the Haas, require programs to be four-digit numbers, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter for us, I don't believe. The last four of your social. The last four of your social would be good if you hand them all in to me. That would be wonderful. See, yeah, see the project is a name. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, easy enough, right? My output folder, I've already defined where I want that to be, but you can define where you want it to be. Click post. This is where I want it to go is my, well, I guess not my setup sheet because I already did that. Let's call it sheet and click save. <coughs> and when I do that, blop, out comes all of this ridiculousness that means nothing to me. But to a machine, it means something. And that, I believe, is what we would then take to our friend, the machine. Now, not necessarily that one, because we don't play nicely, according to Gabe, which I would expect him to know more than anyone else. So I would listen to him. But in theory, that's what you would do. If you were working with, say, your boxy, you would just export this and you'd be good to go because we've worked with them to make sure that it works on their little machine. How many lines do you have? How many what? Lines? lines. Yeah. I have no idea. 398. Okay. After you said four digits in the program name, I spaced. How did you get this like, thing? Click post. Then as you save it somewhere, okay. you can click around. Look at that, 1,588. Does that seem reasonable? Oh, yeah, if you did stepped instead of just jamming it down in there, it would be way more. It would be like however many times that, right? Yeah, and then like with a 3D printer, it's just ridiculous because you're going to have to. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. A lot of them are, you know, little tiny short moves and it takes a second. You don't care if there's a thousand of them. Right. This works. And what are you? Please tell. And code. No. I've handled. Have you really? Yeah. I'm surprised you. Have. I'm not surprised you have. <laughs> I am surprised you have. I went to school for industrial design. Okay. So, for any of you who do have questions, want more help, want more questions answered, stick around. For the rest of you, we're going to look. And we don't have any homework this week. Yay! Mostly because I'm tired of looking at it. No, that's not true. But it's I figure it's probably hard to give a consistent consistent C and C thing. If you actually mill something, maybe I would give you extra credit. But if you know, you don't really need extra credit in this class, so
good luck if you do, but yeah. don't hurt yourself and blame me. Spend more time making those crazy little soft jobs than you would make them. Oh yeah, exactly. Don't don't work on this. Middle. Don't do this. <laughs> but you could do something. What's wrong with this? Memory. So so next week we are having class same time, same same bat time, same bat channel. Is that it? Um, anyways. I'm still kind of up in the air as to how the rest of this is going to go. I told all of you that we have the final project. I'm working out the final details on that. So there will be more to come on that next week, uh, which will be very fun and exciting. But uh, I'll let you know via Meetup, the Meetup site, more details about our eighth class uh, then. So stick around if you have more questions. If not, go home and enjoy the rest of your life. <coughs> which is what I'm hoping to do soon. <coughs> for our final topic, we're going to make a float for homecoming. Sure. Oh, a float for homecoming would be good.